Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Pursuit's webinar on the equity requirements for SBA 7A loans. So Pursuit is a community-focused lender. Um, we've been around for over 65 years, and our goal is to provide innovative um, financing solutions to small businesses throughout New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Um, throughout our 65-year history, um, we've done that. Uh, we make various types of small business loans, including many SBA loan products, one of which the 7A loan we'll be talking about today. Um, but we also finance um, within the SBA's 504 and Community Advantage programs. And then we have a number of other um, specific loan programs that are here to benefit small businesses. Um, throughout our offerings, we have over 15 loan programs um, that we provide to small businesses to help businesses of all different shapes and sizes Grow. I'm Chris Levy. I'm the Executive Vice President and Chief Credit Officer of Pursuit. Um, I've been with the organization for about 10 years now, um, and I'd also like to introduce Andrea Dabney, uh, Vice President of Pursuit as well. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Chris. Um, so I am also a member of Pursuit's team and have been for about 10 years as well. I'm currently the SBA 7A Lending Manager, so I'm in charge of a group of uh, team members that uh, properly vet and structure 7A deals up through underwriting and approval. Excellent. Sounds like we have a perfect expert here to talk about the 7A program and the equity requirements that come along with it. What we're going to cover today, um, we're going to talk about what the SBA requires for equity. Um, we're going to talk about the different sources that the 7A loan um, program allows, um, what things aren't permitted by SBA, and we're going to go through some of the best practices to streamline the equity documentation process. So this uh, loan program, when you have to provide equity, which means you are injecting funds into the business and into the project that we're financing, um, it does require specific documentation and requirements that must be followed in order to comply with the SBA regulations. Mm -hmm. If you don't comply with these regulations, um, your loan is not going to close and fund, and we're going to be unable to provide you with the financing. So it's, it's very important that we follow all these regulations um, and documentation of those uh, equity sources and spending are very important. I'm going to briefly talk about what the requirements are for the 7A program. One of the main things that you'll hear when um, discussing the 7A program is a 10% minimum equity injection requirement um, for a startup business or if it is a business acquisition um, where there may be another business that's in existence, but a new owner is purchasing that business. So those are two scenarios where the SBA specifically requires at least a minimum of 10% of the total project to be injected by the business owners. This depends also by your lender, um, what they require. So different um, projects and different unique needs of the business may require additional equity above and beyond that minimum 10% threshold. Uh, the SBA provides those bare minimum requirements, and then lenders, while they're when they're working with uh, their loan applicants, may determine a different threshold that's required in order to obtain financing. There are situations as well that where equity is not required. Although today we're going to focus predominantly on those projects um, where at least 10% equity is required by SBA. So there's two parts to the equity substantiation process, and by that we mean documenting that the equity has been injected into the business and provided appropriately for um, the funds that the financing is provided. There's two parts to this. One is the sourcing of the funds and one is the spending of the funds. And we're gonna talk about both of those. So first we're gonna discuss the sourcing of the funds, which means where the available money came from um, originally. So one of the things that SBA requires and most lenders require when they're lending money is when this equity comes in um, to assist with the project, they want to know where that money came from. There's a few reasons for that. One is they want to make sure that you didn't borrow money somewhere else to then um, fund that into the business. They want to make sure that this actual free cash that was available um, and is not going to have a, a negative effect elsewhere um, by borrowing that money. So it's important to understand where it came from. Um, they also want to understand that it didn't come from, say, terrorist activities or, or from some other source um, 
that can't be documented or isn't understood by the letter. So it's important to understand where the money came from. And that's what we refer to as when we say the sourcing of the equity funds. For any of you that may have applied for a home mortgage um, or you know, purchased a house, you'll see that with your bank where they're requiring that you show bank statements that you had the money available to provide as part of the closing um, and the purchase of the property. Same thing happens here when we're funding an SBA 7A loan. We want to know where the funds came from and make sure that it's available and was available in a bank account um, or some other eligible source that the SBA identifies. And we'll go through what all the various sources that are eligible throughout this presentation. The second sort um, requirement for equity is that the funds be spent in an appropriate manner. So we're going to outline how the funds are going to be sent, spent for our project. Um, and that money that you're injecting has to go towards those specific um, buckets, if you will. So if we say that you're gonna spend the money on inventory or office equipment, we wanna see that you use that money and you purchased those items um, that were designated within the loan approval. And we're gonna want copies of those um, invoices, checks, receipts, whatever it may be, to document that the funds were spent accordingly with our loan approval. So those are the two um, main aspects of equity substantiation that we're going to go into more detail on today. And now I'm going to turn it over to Andrea to discuss some of those equity sources that are permitted by SBA. Okay, great. Thanks, Chris. Um, so a couple of sources that are acceptable by SBA. Obviously, one would be cash that's not borrowed. So this can be, you know, your personal cash, any funds that you have in your current business account, or perhaps you're intending to receive a gift from a family member, as long as it's properly documented as such, and there's no intended repayment of that gift, um, SBA does permit those funds um, to be counted towards your equity injection. So another acceptable source is cash that's personally borrowed and then lent to the business. And on the next slide, we'll take a look at a few examples of what's acceptable for that. Um, funds already spent on business expenses. So say you're purchasing equipment and there is a requirement to put a deposit down on that piece of equipment. As long as you can provide sufficient documentation, you know, say the invoice and the cancel check or proof of payment, SBA does allow those costs um, to count towards your equity injection. Um, assets other than cash. Uh, this is a unique scenario that most businesses probably won't be in, but an example of this is if you purchased a property, a commercial real estate property sometime in the recent past, and you now want to have financing to construct and fit up an establishment to operate your small business, SBA would permit the value of the real estate to count towards your equity injection as long as that value is verified by an appraisal. And then last on this list here, a note of subordinated debt. Uh, again, this is another unique situation that we will touch on a few examples of in the next few slides. Um, the term subordination simply means that the payment of that loan and the collateral position of the SBA loan will take preference um, over that loan. And depending on the situation, you may or may not be able to make payments against it for the life of the SBA loan. All right, now let's take a look at some borrowed cash examples. So in this scenario, number one, you have a $100,000 total project to buy some equipment and inventory. That magic minimum number, equity injection number of 10% would put your equity injection requirement at about $10,000. Uh, say you have a rental property and you have a home equity line of credit that you have available to you to draw against and you intend to do that um, for your equity injection. SBA would permit you to to use these borrowings towards your equity injection as long as there is an outside source of repayment other than the business, um, from a source other than the business. In this instance, since it's a rental property, you likely collect rental income that would be used to offset any borrowings on this HELOC, so SBA would consider that acceptable since it's an outside source. Uh, the second scenario here, same situation, but you have a family member that's willing to lend you the money that's required for the equity injection. Again, this would be acceptable to SBA as long as it would be repaid with a source outside of the business. Uh, say your spouse is employed elsewhere and intends to repay that loan with his or her salary, uh, this would be acceptable to SBA. Now let's take a look at some subordinated debt examples. 
uh, say you're looking to purchase a business and your total project cost is again about hundred thousand dollars that magic minimum number of equity injection would be about ten thousand um, it's not uncommon in business acquisitions for sellers of the business to be willing to provide some of the financing of the total purchase price um, in these scenarios sba does say if that if the seller is willing to provide some of the financing you still have to come to the table with a minimum of five percent or half of that total minimum requirement of ten um, so in this scenario number one uh, SBA would permit the seller to hold a note um, for $5,000 as long as you were able to cover the remaining $5,000. Um, in this instance, since it's counting, the seller note is counting towards your 10% equity, um, there would be no payments permitted on that note for the life of the loan, the SBA loan. Uh, scenario number two, so same situation, except you, you do have the full $10,000 available to you, and the seller is also willing to hold a note for $10,000. Um, SBA allows in these situations, since you're already coming to the table with the full requirement of 10% yourself, um, for the lender to determine the subordination requirements on the seller note. So whether or not um, the lender will permit you to make payments on that seller note for the life of the SBA loan. Um, regardless, they would still be subordinated to SBA in terms of collateral preference. Um, so now that we've covered some equity sources that are acceptable, um, we'll just touch on a few examples of sources that are not acceptable to SBA. So funds that are borrowed and repaid from your business's cash flow. So say in those examples of the home equity line of credit and the loan from your family member, if your only available source of repayment in those instances are your salary from the business, um, SBA does not permit this to count towards your equity injection. Uh, second on the list here, the value or cost of education. Um, say you're, pra you're a practicing attorney, uh, the cost you uh, incurred to obtain your law degree would not be able to count towards your equity injection. Thanks, Andrew. Those were some great examples, and I'm sure that our viewers out there uh, learned a lot from that. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the spending on equity. As I discussed previously, we have the sourcing of the equity, which Andrea um, talked about. And then the second part is the spending on the equity. So what happens is we um, require that the equity must be spent before the loan closes. Um, this makes sense. We want um, you as the borrower to put in your part before that us as the lender puts in our part. So we require that the business, the business um, spent the money on appropriate expenses before the loan closes, or on the alternative that the funds are set aside in escrow, and then we'll jointly disperse those funds um, for eligible expenses. One of the important things is that SBA requires a paper trail. We have to have all the documents um, to substantiate that the funds were spent as intended within that loan approval. So this could be invoices, receipts, the checks used for payment, um, large quotes um, if you're buying it from a large vendor. Um, these are all gonna be required along with the bank statements that show checks being paid or wire receipts. Um, all of that is gonna be required to be substantiated by the lender. So it's very important that you as the business owner keep track of everything that's spent, keep all those documents handy because those are gonna have to be provided to us in order for the financing to be completed. It's also important, um, typically cash payments are not able to be substantiated. Um, so it is important that you have a bank account um, that you are writing checks from in order to make these substantiations. The equity substantiation of the spending is one of the most critical items that SBA looks for when they're reviewing files. So it is very important that this is all well documented and supported um, or else you may run into issues with your loan. Some of the best practices in order to streamline the process. Um, this is gonna make it much easier on you to be able to substantiate and much easier on the lender to review what has been spent already. The first step would be to set up a dedicated business bank account. Once you transfer your funds into this account, um, that'll be, enable us to document the source of the equity originally. And then since all of the funds are being spent out of this bank account, it'll be very easy to see how the funding spent and where the money went to. We'll be able to look 
each month at your bank statements, see that the funds are spent appropriately, and then also collect the receipts um, along with it that uh, match up with the bank statements and the canceled checks that come along with those bank statements. The SBA is gonna require a three month history. So have those statements ready. Um, your lender is guaranteed to ask for those items. So having those prior three months of bank statements for every account in which you're using um, for the equity contribution or for the equity spending, have those statements available and easy to hand over to your lender to document early on in the process. You should also get in the habit of um, each month providing those statements to your lender. That way they have them easily available and in their file and if they ever need to revert back to them or look for something specific in them, they'll already have them handy. Um, so regularly have those things um, on file and get them to your lender so that they can see what's happening um, with your equity process. Those are some best tips for you. Also highly recommend um, using Excel spreadsheets to keep track of all the funds and that way you can total everything up very easily. Um, keep track of things. That brings us to the end of our webinar. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we obviously provided a lot of information with, to you. If you have any additional questions, um, please visit our website or email us. You can start an application with Pursuit right online. Um, we'll guide you through that process um, rather easily. So thank you uh, for taking the time to view this webinar, and we hope that um, you learned a lot about equity substantiation and are gonna use these best practices with your next application with Pursuit.